Hi, it's Alistair at Electric Scotland. Uh, just doing the introduction to my weekly newsletter. Uh, let's see, uh, it's for uh, Friday 13th uh, of September. And in it, I'm actually highlighting um, an event. It's the 42nd Royal Highlanders Call for Volunteers. It's basically to man the Forfer Bridey Booth. So I love fall for Bridies, I must confess. Love them with baked beans and fries, particularly. Uh, doesn't exactly put you on a diet, of course, but really good food. This is in Indiana, uh, Fort, I uh, don't know how you spell it, or say, Quintenon, something like that. Uh, West Lafayette in Indiana. So the address and the phone numbers and all that are there for you if you'd like to volunteer. And hopefully you might get a free fall for Bridie pie if you're a volunteer as well. That would be great fun. Okay, um, I've also had occasion to look at my stats uh, simply because I've been looking for some direct advertisers for the site because I'm intending to ditch Google. Uh, I don't think Google's very good these days to be honest with you. Um, I think it's going way down the tubes, in my view, anyway. So I'm, I'm looking at replacing with some direct advertising. Uh, so I've had to look at the stats because I've been asked for them. And I was pretty amazed because it must be, gosh, I think it's a couple of years since I last looked at my stats. So I, I'm really out of date on what's going on. But I noticed for Electric Scotland, the United States is still the number one visiting country. But a very close second is actually Germany. And, and that certainly hasn't happened. Um, I mean, Germany was always in the top 10, but never second or anything like it. But it's a very close second in the United States. And Great Britain is now in a, th a third and quite a weaker position. I mean, it's uh, less than half the visitors that Germany brings in. And then Canada is, is, is the fourth. Uh, with Australia fifth. So I've, I've given you the first 15 visiting countries for Electric Scotland and I've also given you the top uh, 15 visiting countries for Electric Canadian where for Electric Canadian Canada is is by far the biggest number of visitors. After that we've got the United States and Germany um, is, is, is a weak third certainly uh, South Korea and then Great Britain after that. Um, so I, I just thought you just might be interested to see where people are coming uh, to the site from. Uh, right, so anyway, on to the Scottish news for this week. Obviously the Brexit thing is just going bananas at the moment, so I haven't given you a lot of coverage, but I've given you some details on it. Basically, Britain's young people are anything but a homogeneous pro-Remain bloc. Since Brexit has taught us many things as a country, one of the harsher lessons is that mainstream politicians, along with the media and policy communities, can no longer be trusted to provide an accurate and comprehensive account of why important political events happen. And I would certainly agree with that. So that you might find that of interest. Uh, then the next story is Swiss Stock Exchange warns Britain be ready to protect the city against bullying Brussels. It said six, that's the Swiss exchange, has seen its trading volumes boom after the standoff as investors have had to use its services to access Swiss shares. Despite the windfall from the ongoing spat, Mr. Jesshoff said he would prefer the Swiss and EU to strike a deal to end the deadlock. The next story is, I voted Remain and backed a second referendum, but here's why I now back Johnson. It says Adam Honeyset-Watts is Director of Conservatives in Communications 
and works in the financial technology sector. So kind of interesting to get his view on things. Then Glasgow to host UN Climate Change Summit in 2020 it says the UK has won the bid to host the 26th conference of the parties known as COP26 following a partnership with Italy. Uh, next theory is the new EU Commission is an affront to democracy. It says the EU's new commissioners include politicians under investigation for alleged corruption and misuse of funds. I tell you, it's as much the corruption that goes on in the EU is what, why, and, the, and the undemocratic way of running them that, 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 that makes me want to get out. Anyway, Canada's campaign features plain songs and vasectomies. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau on Wednesday formally launched a six-week campaign for re-election in which he and his rivals will crisscross the country in planes and on buses to try to win over voters. The Luda's polls are showing Conservatives and Liberals neck and neck. The NDP, which had been uh, pretty significant, is now quite a weak third position, with the Green Party a close fourth. Um, this new Bernier party seems to be in a, 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 just an, a, a, a non-entity, really, at the end of the day. But we'll see what happens over the elections. Things can change. And the next story is, Conservatives retain a large lead over Labour. It says Britain's governing Conservatives retain a significant lead over the opposition Labour Party, according to a poll published on Wednesday. So I thought you might like to agree with that. Then Conservatives in Scotland need something different. I tell you, I read this and I was really amazed of what they said. And, and I think what they said is absolutely true. I think if the Conservatives followed this guy's take on it, I think the Conservatives could do extremely well in Scotland. It says there are only two issues of consequence in Scottish politics, Brexit and independence. So... You might want to read that. Then the last story is Scotland Northern Ireland Bridge. How likely is it to be built? Because there's a bit of talk about it. It's talking about 15 billion to actually build the bridge. But they say it's doable because there are bridges in the world that are actually larger than would be needed. So, yeah. Anyway, these are the stories I brought for you this week. Now on to Electric Canadian. Uh, I found a copy of the Canadian Transportation Magazine for 1900 and there's another, apparently another 50 copies on the Internet Archive. But I've got up volume 1900, uh, which for 1900, which you can read online. I also got the Journal of the Canadian Bankers Association and there's another 20 copies available on the Internet Archive. But I've got volume 5 for October 1897 to July 1898, uh, which you can read on the site. And then I came across the Canadian Newspaper Directory. It's the fifth edition, published in 1907. And I put it up because it's just this view, looking for local newspapers. Sometimes you don't know what they're called or anything like that. So I thought this directory would be useful for researchers. So I thought I'd put it up as a research resource for you. And then the final one for Electric Canadian is Annual Flowers for Canadian Gardens. It's by Isabella Presson and R.W. Oliver. It was produced in 1947 and was issued by the Department of Agriculture. So I thought if you're a gardener uh, or, or even new to, to, to Canada and, and want to create a garden, that might be a really good resource for you to find out what kind of uh, flowers would be good for the garden. Then on to Electric Scotland. Uh, Thomas Mackay Cooper, who is Lord Cooper, is the Lord Justice General and Lord President of the Court of Session for 1947-54. to 54. Um, 
basically uh, I got this book from NOLA when I was over in Toronto. It's still in copyright as I understand it, but I have taken his biography uh, from it and put it on the site and I'm actually making it the story for this week. If you go and view the article on the site, you'll see pictures of him and also a picture of the book that I took the biography from. And then Rifleman is the next one. It's about this three-masted sailing ship built in 1860s by Stan Bruce. I will say I put it up last week, but for some reason I forgot to mention it in the weekly newsletter. So I'm uh, sorting that out. But basically, uh, while he was doing his writing for this and doing his research, he came across uh, information on the great Coram Street murder. And there's a, I, so I've given you a link to YouTube as well, where you can listen to the score, story of the murder. Um, but Stan's written to the police and also to the, uh, to the Sun newspaper to see what they think um, of this. So it'll be interesting if there's any really comeback on that, I'll let you know. Anyway, Supremacy of Aberdeen Angus Cattle. A decade of merits, results of leading fat stock shows during the past decade in Great Britain and America, classification of special premiums and American Aberdeen Angus Breeders Association sales for the year 1909. It's edited by Chaz Gray and uh, it's, well, I don't know, it's uh, a, a good book, especially if you're interested in, 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 in cattle. And then I found uh, an interesting book on the history and genealogies of the families of Miller. It includes names like Woods, Harris, Wallace, Maupin, Oldham, Kavanagh and Brown with interspersions of notes of the families of Dabney, Reed, Martin, uh, Broadus, Gentry, Jarman, Jimison, Ballard, Mullins, Mickey, Moberly, Covington, Browning, Duncan, Yancey, and others. So there's a whole pile of names there. Uh, not all Scottish, I would suggest, but uh, nevertheless, I thought that was a good resource for, for, for people looking for Miller anyway. And then The Home Preacher, uh, this is the fifth week uh, I'm putting this up, and this service is by Dr. McLeod, Norman McLeod. So I um, hope you're in, enjoying getting benefit from these. As I say, I'm putting each one up on the Saturday prior to the Sunday. So I thought, well, if you want to get prepared for the Sunday, then you can download it each Saturday. So the sixth one will actually go up on Saturday. Uh, right, photographic view album of Brechin and District. I had a link to this PDF file to the foot of a Brechin page. Uh, some lovely, lovely pictures, black and white of course, but certainly beautiful pictures, very crisp and clear. Ogaya, or a chronological account of Irish events. I've actually had this uh, on my uh, kind of to-do list for some time, and I thought it was about time I put it up. It's collected from very ancient documents, faithfully compared with each other, and supported by the genealogical and chronological writings of the First Nations of the Globe. It's written originally in Latin by Roderick O'Flaherty, uh, but it's been translated by the Reverend James Healy, A.B., in two volumes in 1793. And I suppose the reason I hesitate to put it up is this, because that's the date when we use the letter F instead of the letter S, so it's a wee bit challenging to read. But as I keep saying, if you start to read it, you soon kind of get into the way of it. But there's some cracking good information there. So I'll put that up in our Irish section. And then Scotland picturesque historical descriptive, being a series of views of Edinburgh and its environs. The fountains, glens, lochs, sea coasts, and the palaces, castles, and ecclesiastical buildings of Scotland consisting of over 70 chromolithographs from original and copyright drawings. So, looking for Edinburgh's environments. 
There must be other volumes of this actually covering other parts of the country, but this I have to find this one for Edinburgh. This environment, so I put it up on our Edinburgh page. And then John Buchan. Uh, I only two of his books. Um, he was a famous author, 39 Steps. You'll probably know him for. Um, but I, I, I picked up a couple of his books. One was called The Watcher by the, by the Threshold. And the other one is a Salute to Adventures. Adventurers. So I've given you a link to both of those. I, I actually read quite a bit of The Watcher by The Threshold. And it's quite... Um, it's really about a, a guy that's interested in Pictish and early Gaelic histories. And he goes up and spends some time with a shepherd uh, up in the north of Scotland. And um, the shepherd knows the old tales with the brownies and stuff like that. Um, but basically he ends up going to a place that the shepherd said, I wouldn't go there if I were you, but he couldn't resist the temptation. Next thing I know, he's captured by these brownies, or old people, and they take him to a special cave. And, um, you know, I mean, it's... Well, I do. I was kind of fascinated by it. I, I could kind of understand his views on things. And I, I, I just thought it was good. So, um... Because he, he did talk and wondered about the old folk, you know, whether in fact the, these stories in the old days were actually true, but we've lost so much since then. And he was suggesting that these were the remnants of a race of people that no one, that everyone knew, but no one talked about per se. So um, it was just, well, I don't know. I, Bit of a horror story, I will say. So it's maybe not for kids to read, certainly. But, but anyway, I, I was amazed at it. And then the other one, as I say, the um, Salute to Adventurers, uh, was that's got a lot of stories in it as well, and it's really good. So I hope maybe you enjoy both uh, or either of them. Then uh, the last slide I've got for you is the Learned Kindred of Curry. Just please be advised that Lord Lyon has ruled the Curries from the Western Highland Curries of Scotland are an independent family referred to as the Learned Kindred of Curry. So I got sent this in by Robert Curry um, and uh, he's given us a picture of himself with the Lord Lyon and also the document that was given to him that settles now them being this... Uh, learned kindred of curry so if you're a curry especially i think you might want to have a wee look at that if you didn't know about it and then the story this week i've got for you is i decided because i, I keep saying i love biographies i thought i'd give you this story on the selected papers of the right honorable lord cooper of Col ross who was lord justice general and lord president of the court of session between 1947 and 54. Um, because uh, to me, it's, he's, he's a great character, and I, I think you learn a lot from biographies. At least I always feel you learn something from every biography. I mean, how he did well. And, and funny enough, he was educated at Dollar Academy, which I didn't. Uh, well, I certainly didn't know about him when I was at Dollar, but uh, as it's my old school, I thought, oh, well. We'll put this in. So, um, so anyway, I, I hope you enjoy that biography. Okay, and that's basically it for this week. I've been busy getting the house tidied up. I've had a complete repainting job of the house. So all the blue wood is all covered up again. I've painted the new step I installed, or front steps which will catch up to the porch. And uh, he's coming back on tomorrow just to tidy up a few wee bits and pieces. And then tomorrow I should get a quote for the putting up um, some siding. Uh, I want to do sockets around all the windows, which means taking all the storm windows down, cleaning them all, 
and cleaning the windows and then putting the sockets up and everything around. So I think that's where you're going to cost me about $1,500 to get all that done. I've got 18 windows, so it's a lot to be dealt with, but we'll see what the quotes is tomorrow. If it looks good, I'll go ahead with it. And that just means the house is all watertight and everything for the coming next few years anyway. It's always something you've got to do when you own a house. You've always got to do things. And every year I usually spend at least a couple of thousand every year on doing things in the house, either repairing things or improving things. So gradually I'm getting there. <laughs> and I've been now 16 years in Canada, would you believe? I don't know where the time's going. It, does, it seems like it's only been five years somehow or other, but 16 years, that's a lot of time. Okay, so anyway, there we go. And uh, if you happen to know if anyone would like to do some direct advertising on the site, I'm open for offers. I don't need a lot of money, so it's not going to cost a fortune for sure. Uh, but if, if you know of anyone that might benefit from advertising on the site, appreciate it if you let them know about it. But certainly I'll be taking Google off very shortly now. In fact, I think it's off a lot of the pages already, but it's both on Electric Canadian and uh, Electric Scotland. So there you go. Okay, that's it for this week. Hope you enjoy the... Uh, the various articles and news stories and uh, look forward to hearing any comments from you okay and if there's anything you want me to look at specifically do let me know okay